Hello. I think that's working. Good afternoon. I know the background audio is still going, but I thought that would be a cooler transition if I leave some music there because that's kind of a nice little jam going. But I'll pull that down and say good afternoon. Hello, thanks for watching, whoever you are. This is Applied Digital Studies and, it, well, okay, you can see my playlist. This is where that music was coming from. Uh, if you go on Spotify, you've got, there's lots of these playlists that are labeled copyright royalty free. And I don't know if they really are, um, but I do seem to get fewer copyright strikes on YouTube when I use audio from these playlists. So hopefully that continues to be the case. I hope you're doing well. This is Applied Digital Studies, DGS3, DGST. 395, a class at the University of Mary Washington. And if you are watching this stream, you are probably in my class. So uh, I hope that's the case, but if you're not in my class, you're welcome anyway. Uh, let's see, things, audio sync looks a little off, but not terrible. Sorry. I'll make a couple of slight tweaks here to my audio sync. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little picky about that. Um, I think that's better. It's a little hard to tell um, until I look at the playback later, but I think that's good. So I see you've got a few viewers online, on Twitch at least. I'm showing several on Twitch, let's see. And lots of people, lots of people online in Discord, great. That's always nice to see, so I know people are out there. Um, currently still showing nine viewers on Twitch, but I feel like it's probably more, sometimes that number takes a minute to update. So uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that, but I'm going to launch into introducing and talking about some things today. Um, I just got out of a meeting. I've been in a meeting for like two hours, so I've, I apologize. I don't have, um, I plan to write like an announcement. Hello, Alex. Good to see you. Um, I plan to write like an announcement with some instructions and reminders and so on, and I just ran out of time with this meeting I had to go to, a uh, department meeting. Um, so I don't have that, but I do want to uh, say a few things that are, I think, pretty important. And so hopefully, um, I mean, you can hear me say these things now, but I will write those up in an announcement later, uh, which is to say, uh, hi, Rachel, uh, which is to say uh, we're, we're at a, a turning point in the semester and I want to, you know, turn this ship around pretty deliberately in some ways. And the big shift that's happening is from me to you in the sense that uh, what I want to start transitioning you into is working on your big project, which is a largely independent project. So it's a, it is similar to an independent study in some ways, uh, but it's something you do with the support of your peers and with me, and so it's not totally on your own. Uh, it does take a bit of kind of warm up to the idea, and that's what today is. I want to try to warm you up to the idea, get, start, get you started thinking about it, and also uh, just a, you know, it's a, it's a shift, right? So uh, there's a conceptual shift here. There's also a kind of expectational shift. <laughs> That's not a word, but uh, I hope you know what I mean. Like I, I, the kind of involvement that you will need to commit to for this class is going to change uh, starting today. So I want to talk about some of that and uh, see what your questions and concerns are and help you navigate that as best as I can here. Um, but uh, a lot of the information is in Canvas. If you look at the big project assignment, um, it's described uh, in some detail there, although as you'll notice as you read those, there's still a lot that you will be filling in yourself. So that's the basic plan today. Uh, I have a few other things administratively to talk about, but that's about it. So I hope you all are doing okay. It's very rainy. Um, it's been really rainy since yesterday. Um, I'm the only parent home right now and my and otherwise my 11 year old is in charge, so I have to keep an ear out to see, <laughs> to make sure things are going okay with them. Uh, there's a lot of thumping upstairs, but sounds like happy thumping. <laughs> so I'm gonna hope that's the case. Earlier, she was like just leaning on the doorbell, just like ring, wailing on it just constantly for like 10 minutes. So, and I couldn't stop what I was doing to go tell her to stop doing that. So hopefully she's learned her lesson and won't do that anymore. Now that I've explained to her about how difficult it will be to fix that if it breaks. Uh, anyway, so um, I don't want to belabor that too much, but I hope you're doing well. This, this weather can be a real drag. I just want to acknowledge that because I, I think sometimes whenever weather affects, you know, just weather or changes in seasons, things like environmental factors, um, when they affect your mood or your feeling about yourself, um, I think sometimes it helps mitigate that impact if you notice it and talk about it. At least in my case, I find if I kind of 
talk about the weather, it affects me less like emotionally and mentally. So I'm telling you all about the weather, partly to help me with that. Um, it is very much like an oppressive blanket of moisture right now. Uh, and I guess it's named Hurricane Delta. Like I think, I guess it has a name. Uh, but like I was telling my kids, this is kind of, I, I, I lived in Florida for a number of years and they're always like, oh, cool. So you got to see hurricanes. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's, this was my experience of most hurricanes down there. It was just kind of a constant blanket of rain that just doesn't change for like three days. And like, that was it. So, and it's kind of, it's boring ultimately. Like it's not like a storm where they're like exciting thunder and, and the wind and then it's gone and then it comes back again. Um, it's just the same thing for like three days. Uh, that was that was hurricane season in Florida for, for me. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, definitely kind of a cool mist, very autumnal, right? I mean, I used that word in my stream this morning for a graphic novel. It's a very autumnal day. It's a great day to kind of walk in the in the forest if you if you have any woods near you, uh, see how the leaves are doing. Lots of great color around town. Uh, I spent some time walking on Lee Drive yesterday, if you know that area in Fredericksburg. Um, but I know some of you are in different parts of the country right now, so um, I'd love to hear how things are going there in terms of your seasonal change. Uh, I think it's going to be it is different everywhere, right? I think some of you are farther north, so you might be experiencing more color changing already. But I think we're at least a week still before our peak here. Um, anyway, so yeah, hope you all are doing okay, navigating things, figuring things out. I see some people typing, so I'll let you finish your thought. Yeah. Yeah, cloudy and sleepy. Yeah, sleep. That's the thing. Like, it sometimes it makes me feel down emotionally, but also just sleepy is the big thing. Like, I definitely hit the snooze more times than normal this morning. Just you just want to stay in bed, you know. But uh, we're not in bed. We're here. We're talking. So um, let's see, sixteen, fifteen online on on Twitch. Hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's good enough uh, to proceed. Um, but yeah, uh, let me say a couple of things kind of generically administratively um, reminder wise so actually i can double check something i wanted to see how many of you have turned in the most recent thing because i know some of you are still working on it not really okay. uh, that's inconvenient i think my password just expired <laughs> my net id password it was working earlier but I think it just expired. I knew it was gonna happen soon and I just put it off and yep, okay. <laughs> I, had to, I had to reset my password, uh, which I can't do on this computer, obviously. I'm, I'll do it in a minute. Uh, but what I, wanted, I did wanna say is uh, a couple of things. So uh, if you are still working on the most recent thing, the retro homepage, it's okay to keep working on it. You're doing, you're fine. Um, and it's also okay to be, you know, challenged a little bit by it. Like I want you all to recognize that some things are challenging and, it, and it's a good thing to work through challenges because not only are you achieving the thing that you are being challenged by, but you're learning a bit about yourself in terms of how you can, how you respond to a challenge like this, like how you rise to the challenge, but also how you, um, let me turn that off, <laughs> how you, uh, how you solve problems, like how you actually go through a series of steps to try to figure out what uh, the best course of action is. And sometimes that means uh, finding resources beyond what I've given you. And sometimes that means, uh, you know, choosing your battles, like deciding to do something or deciding that something's good enough and then moving on. And that, that's a reasonable thing to do as well. Um, but I, I'm here to encourage you for these things. I'm here, here to help you do these things. If you are not done with it yet, I still would like for you to try to do it and I'm still happy to help you do it. Um, the, the tech support channel is still open in the, in the Discord. So if you get stuck on something, please ask. I love, I, I actually, like, I'm, I, I'm not just saying this. I, like, I genuinely in, really enjoy helping someone solve problems with their code. So um, you do not need to apologize if you are asking for that kind of help from me because I love doing that. So please help, uh, please help me out or give me that opportunity to help you out. Um, and it's, you know, honestly, like it, it is really just a lot of abstractions. And that's the biggest thing I think people struggle with when they're doing this for this for the first time. And, you know, that's, I get it. That's, that's, that is the case. There's, there's really nothing we can avoid about that except sticking with it until it kind of clicks. And I, I love helping things click. So please uh, don't feel uh, embarrassed or, or feel like you need to apologize if you're asking for help. Like, no, like this is not like a class for people who already know everything. This is a class where you're where you're encouraged to learn these things. So please, um, please learn these things. Please keep learning these things. 
Um, okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to so I, I was I meant to look up and see how many have, had, have how many of you are in that situation where you might still be working on it, and I don't know how many there are, but I know of several of you that are still working on it because you've just you've reached out, um, and that's fine. Um, so something is happening at this point in the semester that I think we also need to talk about with this class and um, with every class, but this class is the one that the one that I'm teaching. So <laughs> I will talk about it, and that is this, which is. Uh, this is the point of the semester where if you've gotten behind, it starts to get overwhelming. And I can definitely relate to that. Um, I can definitely uh, share my experience that I also feel that way um, with this class and with others. As I start getting behind in course prep and grading, this is really the point where it starts to really, really get to me. And so uh, I imagine many of you are in that place as well. Uh, if you, for example, you were kind of for some, for whatever reason, you missed a day or two in the last module, and you're just kind of keep telling yourself, "Well, I'll get, uh, you know, I'll, I'll catch up later. I'll, I'll look at it later. I'll catch. I'll do it on my own." Um, that can be risky. Uh, I just want to warn you because the thing that happens is, you know, if you're not there making contact with the class every day, it can pretty quickly snowball into something that becomes too much to take on, and then the idea of trying to sort your way back through it all can be overwhelming. And that sense of being overwhelmed can lead you to disconnect even further with the class. And I really don't want that to happen. And um, I mean, I want to help you help help you make that not happen. Uh, I, I think um, so. I, I've got an idea, and I'll show it to you in a moment. But I'm just trying to be motivational at this point to tell you that this is okay when these things happen. But you've got to do that work to connect. Um, this is the biggest challenge of an online class, and this is a kind of half online class. So for those of you who are in the fully online portion of this class, there's a real risk of disconnecting um, because you're not there every day for me to see if you're there or not every day. And there are just so many of you, you know, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like some of you might be slipping through the cracks. And I, if those, I mean, those of you watching right now are probably not slipping through the cracks, but some people who might not be watching might be. And that's really, uh, that really concerns me. I mean, that's really something that um, I, I want to, uh, a problem that I want to help you solve, uh, but I can't do it for you. I can't do it all for you, at least. I can do some of it. I can help you, but um, let me at least say this, which is that if you are, if you feel like you're lost, you're behind, you're overwhelmed by what you think you have to do to catch back up, please get in touch with me. I can help you create a roadmap that gets you connected back into the mainstream of the class, um, or just assure you that it's fine. And sometimes people, when they get disconnected, they don't realize, or they, they kind of over, they exaggerate the problem or they, they think that there's too much, but there's really not that much. Um, but that's something that we have to kind of talk about and, and, and work through. And that is totally fine. I, you know, sometimes a student will tell me that they were too embarrassed to get in touch with me, but it's, you know, if, if, you know it's too late to do anything about it, but they were too embarrassed to talk about talk to me about it. Please don't worry about that. Please, I don't, I don't think less of you. I don't think badly of you. Um, so, it, but if you, if you're disconnected, if you are worried about how to reconnect, anything like that, please talk to me about it. Uh, send me an email. Reach out on Discord. Um, let's set up a video conference if you want to do it that way. And I'd be, I'd love to kind of help you back in if that's the case. If you're, if you're feeling off a little bit, some of you I will be reaching out to directly because I have, I have noticed that you seem to be missing. But um, many of you, I just, I, I worry about that. So. Uh, please, um, please, please, please let me know how things are going. If you think things are are going badly uh, for you, or you're not sure where to how to reconnect, right? Um, this moment here, where we're shifting into the big project, is a really important moment in the class. So I want to make sure as many of you are here as possible. And I'm a little concerned that the stream number is kind of low right now. So that means there's like six or seven people that would normally be watching right now that aren't. And so I'm a little worried that they'll have a harder time with this um, on their own later. So uh, that's the kind of thing I'm concerned about. I can't do anything about it at the moment, but. Um, you know, here we are. Okay, so, uh, yeah, pep talk slash ramble over. Um, here's what I was thinking about. And um, partly this idea comes from how this class normally goes face-to-face -face, where we're meeting in HCC 327 and there are tables. And another part of it uh, comes from, um, well, just an idea I had. Uh, so for those of you who are online and there's an increasing number of you who are committed to being online, uh, first of all, I hope I, I do worry that some of you might be choosing online because you think it's easier. But it's, as I hope my speech just then shared or, or conveyed, um, I, I think it's really not. I think it's actually a lot harder online. Um, anyway, for those of you who are online, 
the sense that you belong to a community of people that are learning together can be hard to hard to achieve, right? I mean, there's there's uh, 50 or so students in this class, and when I say to you all have this, you know, have a particular conversation in Discord or work through these questions or try to do this activity together, um, you might struggle to find a group or to kind of connect with people. Um, and that's something that would happen pretty naturally in a face-to-face -face class where you're all sitting around five or six at a table and then I just say, okay, table six, do this thing, right? Uh, pretty easy for me to manage. But here's my idea. I made a new set of groups in Canvas. Um, as I just told you, I can't log into Canvas to show you because I need to reset my password. Um, but uh, you hopefully can log into your groups in Canvas. And uh, if you look at, like, I have to describe it instead of showing you, but there is a kind of thing there called a squad now. So if you go to the groups page, I put each of you into what I've called a squad. I don't know. I was trying to think of synonyms for group, and that was what I came up with. And what this is is a small group of three or four total per group, per squad, and this is meant to be a small group of students to touch base with and to connect with and also uh, to check in with. So I've also gone ahead and made channels for uh, each of those squads. So don't do anything yet, but when I say go, I want you to try to figure out what squad you're in, go find your channel in Discord, and then um, say hi to whoever's there and try to, to start connecting with each other. Um, so you don't need to do it yet, but um, once you get in that group, uh, that will be a group of people that you can um, chat with whenever I say have this particular conversation or work on this together. That's who you can work together with. Um, and uh, also, as you start working on your big projects, that's a group to kind of check in with and update each other about and give each other feedback on things. Um, this is not like a collaborative group, like you're not working together on a project. I guess you could, but um, the idea isn't that. This isn't like a group in the group project sense. This is just a small group of people to kind of think of as your a group to belong with, a place to connect with. Um, I assigned these randomly. I didn't really put a lot of thought into it other than trying to match up people that were fully online with people that are face-to-face um, -face sometimes. Um, but it's that even that wasn't exact. So it's just a small group of people to check in with. And um, also what I would request with these groups, with these squads is, you know, check in with each other and if there's a person in your squad who isn't checking in, or you haven't heard from in a while, you you know don't see online, um, let me know so I can reach out to and see what's going on because that will help me uh, help me help you not fall through the cracks, so to speak. All right, so this is an idea. I wish I thought of this sooner, but I think this is an idea that will help, especially as we move into a more independent modality for this class. So um, the groups are just numbered, right? So it's one one through fourteen. There ended up being fourteen of these to keep the numbers the right way. Uh, so uh, th those numbers are pretty generic. Here's what I'd like to do, and I'm about to say go. When I say go, I would like for you to find your squad, find a channel for your squad, and with whoever's online in your squad right now, uh, and you may be the only one, but if you, if you have another person there that's in your squad, um, see if you can come up with a team name or a group, a squad name, something other than the number that you have. Um, once you've got that, then at me, in Discord, so in, within your channel, type at Zach Whalen and then say, hey, here's our name, and I will, um, I will change your channel name to your actual name. Okay, so does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, looks like Katya's typing. Um, but I, I'm saying, so now go ahead and do that. Go look in Canvas, find your group, your, I mean your squad, find your squad, and then um, join the appropriate channel. I mean, you're already in the channel. But yes, thank you, Rachel. Oh, nice. Okay, that's easy. Thank you. Um, I didn't realize it was that easy. So that's very, thank you. I, I it doesn't. I don't have that option when I look at it, like because I'm not in groups. Um, so that's good to see. So that's what you're looking for. So Rachel is in squad eight. So there you go. How are you in squad eight? Okay, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> just don't. I mean, don't don't overthink it. But just I thought you should be in seven or. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Cool. So, so now, again, your title is, I mean, your job is to have a quick conversation and, um, yeah, good call, Brian. You might want to mute other channels because you'll start hearing the blips from, like, the, the update noises in channels that you're not actually viewing. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, do that if you need to. 
have a quick conversation. I'll give you like two or three minutes. I'm gonna uh, try to reset my password while you're doing that. Um, let me see. I, I'll, I'll, I'll turn on the I'll turn the Spotify back on while you are having that conversation. Then I will rejoin you shortly after I've reset my password. All right, everyone, hope you're doing all right. Hope that made sense. I'm I finally changed my password successfully, I think. It always takes so long. It's like, I, don't know, I mean, it should just be easy, but uh, I need to update it on my phone because one thing I found, I don't know if you've ever run into this, but after you change your password, oh, good, okay. Um, like your app will continue to try to connect to the server but it's connecting with the wrong password. So it looks like a series of failed login attempts. And when that happens, sometimes the email server's like, no, you can't do that anymore. And then your password gets locked and it looks like it did not do it this time. So let's see. Let's say, oh, cool. Okay, looks like it worked. All right, yeah, 
bunch of email threads going back and forth. Okay, so yeah, if you guys are on your own, Jules and Samantha, just, I mean, it's up to you, right? And it, it doesn't, there's not a lot at stake here. The point is just to have a name to identify with instead of, you know, 12 or six or whatever it is. Numbers are hard to remember. So uh, coming up with a name is fine. No, no, there's not a lot at stake here. Okay, so I'm going to roll the music dry. <laughs> okay, so it looks like I got some requests um, on top. Okay, great. So, um, I can do that, so, okay. And I'll change it in Discord, I, and I guess I can change it in change it in uh, Canvas 2. But cool, there's one request I got, so let's see. The trio. <laughs> sure. All right. Sure. So the trio is group seven is now the trio. So some of you, I guess what's happening is that some of you, like if you're in groups eight through 14, that's actually section two, which is the 250 session. So like, like it doesn't matter which stream you watch really, but the people that, other people in your squad might be not watching until the scheduled time and vice versa. Like there could be people in section one that plan on watching it at the section two time, which is totally fine too. So uh, group name is Dry, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I feel like I should respond in German here. Hold on, let's double check something. The spelling. I can't think of. I can't think of a good German expression, so I will say. Say nothing. I'll say yes. Uh, uh, no, I can't think of German. I'm trying to think of German expressions, so and I'm not good at it because that was a long time ago when I took German. Um, but that's fine. Try. Okay, cool. So in number five, you have one. Ah, nice. Okay, I like it. So group five wants to be 404. Very. Thematic. I'm just gonna call you four for name. I'll just call you four for name does not exist. Great. <laughs> yeah, so I got that one and I will continue to accept requests to change them. Uh, just at me whenever you think of it. It's not urgent if you if you need a minute. Um, okay, let me turn the music off because I want to talk about some more things. So uh, we have until 2.30 here, right? So that should be not, uh, good enough. I hope that's good enough time to uh, give you some ideas. My, my uh, inspirational rant earlier <laughs> got a little long, but uh, I wanted to talk a bit about the big project. So now that I can log into Canvas, uh, I'm going to show you the assignment page. Uh, but actually, I, I not, don't want to go too far into the assignment page. Oh, weird, I'm actually still logged in in this browser. Or maybe I am, maybe it's gonna try to, it's gonna force me to, to log out, I don't know. Um, so this is in the assignments, there's different parts of the big project. Um, it is called the big project, by the way, because it comprises so much of the semester, but I think some people think about big a little bit, um, they get intimidated by that, they think that that means it has to be some grandiose thing. It, it doesn't have to be, it's just something that will take a lot of time, and so, um, you know, that's that's why it's called the big project and also because I couldn't think of a better name for it. It's something that does have several steps. The proposal is probably the most detailed step and it's, it is the first step. So um, take a look at this. There's a lot here and we're going to spend, um, I'm, I'll, I'll introduce it a bit today and then um, spend some more time Wednesday and Friday talking about this as well. 
Uh, but you can see the, the assignment description here is actually very detailed, and that's on purpose because I want to uh, take away the questions about how to organize and format this and let you focus on questions about what your content and what your actual idea is going to be. Um, but if you already have your idea and you want to go ahead and look at the proposal, this is, this is the thing to look at. Um, what I've got here is actually sort of a model of the proposal. So it's pre being, the idea is to prepare it like a formal uh, proposal, like you would prepare a grant proposal or, or a business proposal or something like that. So it's, it's got a cover page, table of contents, it's got a narrative, a rationale, um, a list of resources, a dissemination plan, a, uh, a, a schedule, an assessment. It's got a lot of detailed things here, and I want to talk about each of these in, in some detail, um, which I don't have time for today. I think I need to update that, those dates on that. Um, but the point of this is to help you have a good plan. Your project will go better if you have a good plan. And a good plan doesn't mean that you figured out everything about your project ahead of time, but that you've created a structure that will help you figure out things as you go. So um, that's part of the idea of this uh, big project. Um, so that's there, but you don't need to get into the details with that yet. Uh, I think that the, uh, the detail is meant to be, um, I guess, reassuring, but <laughs> that there is a thing that I want. Uh, but the, as far as the big ideas, we need to spend a little bit of time thinking about that first. All right, so this is my, this is my slideshow. Um, there's not many slides here, but let me go ahead and publish this. And so I can look at it slightly larger. I'll go ahead and turn off the music. And so uh, this is the idea, right? So the big project is something that you should start thinking about, perhaps you already have. If you haven't yet, this is okay. And this little guide here should hopefully help you think about what a big project could be and uh, start generating some ideas. Hopefully we'll have a little time to start generating some ideas by the end of class today. Um, I tend to think of, I like to think of these big projects in terms of these three components. A problem, which you might say is interchangeable with a question. Uh, a tool, which is maybe you could say interchangeable with software and then an artifact. So you have some kind of question that you're using some kind of tool to create a, 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 thing, a thing about it, I guess. So it's really these three things together. And I think having a good plan and helping having that, um, going from an idea to a plan, I think it helps to articulate what each of these three components are for you. So what question or problem are you trying to solve? How are you trying to do that? Like how are you trying to work through that question or problem? And then what are you going to produce as a result? Um, so let me, I know this is all very abstract, so let's get into some, some possible possibilities here. So this is a list, a, a list of, well, a set of three lists that I, a former, uh, a past class helped me generate. And I'm going to invite you to do this as well. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to leave the screen up, up here very long, um, because I want you to come up with your own ideas that are not influenced by others so much. But, uh, in terms of some of the problems that people identified, uh, this was, this was a couple years ago now. So. Things like fake news, net neutrality, uh, access to the web, dark, the dark web, uh, global warming and natural disasters, online education, AI and morality. Like these are some of the things people wanted to talk about. As you are thinking about ideas, think back on what we've done over the past few weeks. We've talked about several of these concepts like AI and morality, um, things like uh, access to the web. Um, we haven't talked about some things like copyright, but uh, you might remember we looked a lot at e-waste and DGSC 101 if you were in my class. So uh, there are several topics that you've probably encountered in the course of a digital studies class that you might want to learn some more about, or you might have some other idea that's totally independent of this, but it's just something you're worried about or thinking about or you're wondering about. Or it could just be something you've noticed. And in terms of this left thing, the thing, the, the orangey um, block, the, the topic, I guess, at this point, you really should just be kind of paying attention, like look at the world around you, look at the online world, especially, um, and see what's out there, see what kind of issues you see, what kind of problems you see, what kind of questions people have, and that might help you generate a project, right? So in terms of the middle thing there, we're talking about tools, and these can be as specific as a specific technology, a platform like Timeline.js, or as generic as uh, HTML, where you can do just about anything with HTML, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, Timeline.js can do one kind of thing really well, like make a timeline, but it can't do other things. So part of what I want you to understand as you think about tools is what are some tools good at and are they good at the thing I'm trying to do with them? And being able to make that decision and evaluation is a big part of this project. So um, that's why this is one of the most important reasons why I'm asking for a proposal so that I can help you say, well, actually, maybe you want to make a game. Maybe Python isn't the best choice for that. 
Yes, you can program a game totally in Python, but you'll be much better off if you use something like Game Maker or Twine, depending on what kind of game you're trying to make. Like let somebody else do the hard work of, of creating a, a game engine and, and instead focus on your, your ideas, your writing, your artwork, whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, and then finally, what kind of thing are you gonna make? So this, these two things are obviously connected and um, that's what I was talking about. Like you can make hypertext just with HTML or you can use Twine and you might have a better time just working with Twine. So think about the best match between the kind of thing you're making and the thing that you're using to make it with. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so here's what I'd like for you to do. We just have, yeah, we have a little time here. Um, you don't have to make a, a document for this, but I am interested in here, letting you all generate some of these ideas. And then I'm going to add these ideas into this project generator. Um, so this uses tracery and it, the, the text that you see here um, on this slide, these are um, added into the grammar of this tracery project idea generator. And um, you'll see that it, as you can see right now, um, many of the idea, ideas that it generates will be bad. Uh, it simply takes one item from this list, another item from the, from the left list, another item from the middle list, another item from the right list. So it takes one of, item from each list and tries to propose a project based on it. And like I said, many of the projects it generates will be bad. But that's kind of the point. We want to think through what makes a good project. So take a minute in your group now and see if you can, in your squads, and brainstorm a few topics that aren't here or that um, even if they are here, you really think they need to be mentioned. And I'm going to, I have the source code of this bot open. So as you suggest things, I will add them. So first of all, actually, let's, let's do this a little bit more organized. So let's say, uh, let me get into Discord here a bit. So... Um, oh, wunderbar. That's what I, that's the word I was thinking of. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Brian and Samantha. I was thinking like wunderlich. Isn't there? Isn't that another word that's similar? Anyway, um, wunderbar. Yes. Uh, so first of all, so with I'm typing this in Discord. So with your squad, see if you can generate some topics, i.e., questions, problems. I'm say etc. Um, and, and notice that like there's I've called these questions and problems and not really topics because a topic can be a little vague. A question implies an answer, a problem implies a solution, and that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be trying to answer the question or trying to solve the problem. So I really like questions or problems uh, as the thing you're thinking of. So, th so talk a minute um, and in your, in your group and come up with um, some questions, some, some questions and problems. And I'll just kind of lurk on your channels. Sorry, I'll leave that. Up. I'll just leave this screen up so you can see. Especially, like, if you see something on here that definitely could be addressed, then let me know. Um, Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm seeing internet censorship coming from uh, group six. Oh, Julie, just Emily, but that works. Okay, interesting. Censorship content, mod content moderation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sure. Cool, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, sorry. Right, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some things that I'm seeing. Um, some of these are already in here in different, slightly differently worded ways. So I'll just say, um, I'll just add censorship online. Uh, you know, content moderation, which really does kind of imply that, although the word sounds kind of neutral, but it really becomes problematic in the context of censorship. Um, disability, uh, what's the word? Um, well, so, okay, GP Gracie, I'll see what your phrasing was. Uh, 
yeah, so disability, I'll just say disability discrimination on campus, or I think the paired with that, it might just be like accessibility of campus. Um, and so that's uh, that's a really interesting one. Yeah, I'm trying not to say too much about these because I'm like, yes, yes, but I, I want to let your ideas kind of drive the <laughs> drive the boat here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, well, okay, so I will I will riff a little bit. So uh, KTV Gracie's uh, asking about discrimination and disability on campus, and that's interesting because on campus as a construct could mean two different things, right? You could mean as a member of the UMW community, since many people in the UMW community are not participating in that community physically right now. Then that might be, you might be able to think of it differently, but often, um, I mean, one very visible kind of disability that people talk about on campus in terms of you know not of it not working well for them is mobility issues. So certain buildings are technically uh, accessible for people with mobility disabilities, um, but uh, it technically doesn't mean comfortably or safe or even you know ideally or safely. Like the Lee Hall is really kind of tricky to get into unless you sort of know how. Um, and uh, certainly the 1201 William Street, there is an elevator, but does it work? Probably not. You know, those are things that I think are issues that obviously have uh, solutions that are bigger than what you could probably do in this project. But I think awareness is important in these kind of things, um, especially because I would just say students have done things like that on this pro on this kind of topic before and the problems are still there. So I think reminding people that these problems are there is a, an important thing to do. So even, I don't know if that's, Gracie, that's the kind of thing you're talking about, but uh, it certainly is an issue. Like a student last year made a map in terms of um, kind of accessibility in terms of campus, like how physically accessible the, the campus community was. And, um, you know, the, the uh, ODR has a similar kind of resource in terms of how to navigate with, um, without you know access to stairs for example but um, it's interesting how those were sort of different maps and that was you know a student generated kind of crowdsourced map ended up with a different idea of what was accessible with versus what was not uh, as opposed to what ODR says is technically accessible and, and people in ODR they know those things I mean they, they work on it too it's not you know they do their best um, oh yeah online test monitoring that's a really interesting one that's definitely I don't think that's on here in any way um, but that's a big issue uh, right now obviously uh, online test monitoring monitoring yeah things like proctorio yeah that was a big issue we talked about a little while ago yeah cool mm-hmm mm -hmm. Gender to technology development? Is that something we already, is it, you, you quote that, Sally, so I'm wondering, is that something that we already have, or? If not, I can just add it. I like that phrase. So, um, gendered tech development. Cool, yeah. So are, are there, whoops, are there any, uh, am I missing any? Well, cre oh, credibility. DJ's asking about internet. Yeah, I think think news is also is kind of part of that, but I think I think just say just say credibility online. So just to circle back a little bit on the disability question, you see that one of the topics that we already have here is disability and technology, and um, this is several weeks ahead, but what we'll be doing once you get to the point of creating your artifact, whatever your project ends up producing, um, we one of the really big conversations we will have is about accessibility. And there are considerations for making your project accessible depending on your platform. In some platforms, that's um, just kind of common sense and it's kind of built into your workflow. And in some projects, you have to do something else, but you really are required to, and I'm expecting you to make your project as accessible as possible for as many users as possible. And we'll talk about how those are different strategies. For example, if you make something with video, you need to have a transcript that's accurate um, so that it can be played as closed captions. Uh, if you do anything on the web, you need to use alt tags and other strategies. And there's 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 a whole lot to it, right? I mean, it's something that you do have to do intentionally, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But that's something that ultimately will be part of every project um, in terms of making sure it's accessible. And as you do that, you'll understand some of the gaps and challenges to accessibility, uh, technologically speaking. Yeah. So good ideas. Um, surveillance. Yeah. 
think surveillance is on here, but these are all good ideas. Good, good. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, getting you sucked in, right? Yeah, cool. Good ideas here. So the the idea really today is to generate ideas, and you're, what you're doing now is brainstorming. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a few more here if I can if I see any more. Um, oh yeah, I like the web web decay and online preservation. Like that's that's a big one. I, I like that idea. Uh, Katya, I mean um, that's something that obviously we benefit from people who have taken steps uh, to preserve things. But like the the imminent demise of Flash is something that I'm pretty concerned about. I don't know if we're ready for that. Um, but you know it's coming, so we should be. Uh, I, I've been, yeah. There's a specific category of flash animation that I don't know is archived, and I've been trying to find examples of it to try to archive it, but I don't know how to find it. Which is that for there's a short period in the early 2000s where when you would go to a website, it would, there would be this like "Welcome to my website" video that would play basically, and you'd have to click through it. And everybody hated it. It was a really annoying trend. But like I kind of want to preserve that, and I want to have access to some of them that I remember being super ridiculous. Um, so, uh, I found a few when I was looking for them, but, um, yeah, so COVID stuff. Yeah, sure. That would be good too. Okay, cool. So good ideas, generating some things. Um, let me, let me, uh, add a couple more now tool wise. Uh, are there any tools that you would like to learn about, or you think should be added to the list? I've got the code here and you can kind of see, um, you may not know these, and this is sometimes the harder part to come up with on your own because, Usually, you know, you want to work with audio, let's say, uh, or you want to work with the web, you're not sure what tool, usually I will suggest a tool. But if there's a tool that you are interested in that you would like to learn just for the sake of learning that tool, that can be a motivating point for a project too. So if there's something that you don't see on this list that you're interested in, um, let me know. But otherwise, mainly I'm interested in like, what kinds of things are you, what kinds of things are you going to create with this? So the point is that this is a, remember you're trying to answer a question or solve a problem and that usually means that you have you are creating an artifact that is meant to connect with an audience so think about what kind of audience you're trying to connect with for your project and what kind of thing would that audience respond to so we've got several examples here you've got Twitter bot, uh, video, social media campaign, an app, a book, um, a script uh, yeah, which is I think I think that was like a movie script is what that was um, you've got music, you've got hypertext, you've got all kinds of things. Um, so what kind of thing do you think would likely help solve that problem? Um, now, as students approach this project, let me go back to my original slide. Often they, you know, I, I presented it as a combination of these three things, but I can tell you that students have been, have, have entered this project at different stages. I like to think of it in terms of starting with the problem, then finding the best tool and the best artifact to help solve that problem or answer that question. But it does also work the other way around where students are like, well, I really want to work with audio. And I think actually Crystal just said that. Um, I want to learn how to work uh, with audio. So that's, that's great. Um, if that's the case, then what tool would you like to learn? Logic Pro, Audacity, um, GarageBand. And then what kind of thing are you gonna create that makes that learning worthwhile? So that, that's a little harder in the sense that you have to come back to the problem or the question from the back end, but I think you can do that. I think that's okay. Um, so think about what kinds of issues could be addressed through, uh, through a song or a mixtape or a podcast. I don't know what kind of audio you're talking about. And then that might help you narrow down the list of problems to, that you might solve. Okay, so we're just about out of time. So let me go back to my big project idea generator and you can, I'll share this link here too, but this is going to generate some projects for us. And again, many of these are not so great. So um, change people's minds about fake profiles with a book made with Dremel 3D. Um, 3D printed book. Change people's minds about fake profiles with a web page made with storyboard that. I don't even know what that is. Uh, help address disability and technology by using Adobe Illustrator to create a map. So that literally was pretty close to what the student did last year. Um, I don't think she used Illustrator, but she used she did some GIS stuff and some visual stuff to make a map, um, trying to look at how different parts of campus are harder to access technologically, not just physically. So literally that was someone's project, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, uh, use Arasma to create a book that deals with fake news. Arasma as a platform doesn't work anymore, so you can't use Arasma, but that's an augmented reality app, and you might there are others now, I think, that work, work and you might be able to make an AR book. Uh, maybe like it would be somehow an overlay. So you're looking at um, act, like fake news, but then the overlay sort of blocks out the fake parts. I don't know. I'm making that up. 
Um, anyway, so I would say if you're just totally stuck, I hit this generator a few times and you might see something that, um, that st stands out to you. Obviously that date has no meaning for this class. Um, I should probably change that on here. Just delete that code um, so that doesn't show up anymore. But yeah, so that's ultimately that's that's your your first step probably for this big project is to if you don't have an idea anyway, um, run run through this generator a few times and see if something uh, actually makes sense to you. Like actually think through it. I mean, this is a generator that's just literally ramming things together randomly and it has no idea if these are good or not. So you do have to do that work to decide if these are good ideas or not. But they hopefully give you the structure of what a good idea is, which is that you have. A thing that you want to make, so in this case, interactive fiction story, um, a, th a reason for making it, and then a method for creating it. All right. So connecting those those three things together is really that's the key. All right. Cool. So correct. So Matt, uh, this is individual projects, unless you really want to work together. <laughs> Something. Yeah, so these, these squads that I put you in are not related to the big project necessarily. Like it's something that if you choose to collaborate, fine, but it's really just meant to be a, an audience for your ideas. So uh, it's a, but it's a smaller audience. So you're not just sort of throwing it out there into the void of the, of the, of the Discord server, but actually reaching out to two or three people to try to make your ideas, see if your ideas make sense. And that, that's the point of having these smaller groups. Uh, okay, so I was gonna say one more. I was gonna say one more thing that's pretty important. Um, I can't think of it. So I, I have some more. I'm gonna have to write you all in an announcement because we're running out of time. We're, we're, we're over time. Um, but I hope this was uh, at least a helpful, you know, introduction, a little warm up to the big project. It is a big project. It's gonna take some time. Oh yeah, the, the thing I was gonna say is like if you do want to be, if you do want to work with somebody, that is acceptable. Um, it's just the only, there will be a couple of slight differences if you're doing a group project and one of those is in the proposal um, part of what you're doing in the proposal is you're persuading you're trying to persuade me that this is a viable project so if you have a group that's going to do it you need to really um, convince me that it that this needs to be a group project as opposed to an individual project All right because sometimes I find people really want to work together but then they find that they don't really know what to do they just like working together or they're or their friends or they're dating or something um, and that doesn't always lead to the best project so uh, I want to really understand that you have a good reason to work together like you have different skills that combined can do something better than if you are working on your own um, so Samantha had a good question uh, I will not say no but I would say yes and as a response um, I would say yes and and instead of no. So I would say, um, this is a good idea. Have you thought about doing it slightly differently? <laughs> you know, that would, so I, I or, or something. Um, the most common, the most common thing I do is rein in over the ambitious project. So I'm just, I'm typing this in Discord too, but the, the most common thing I would do would say like you really you're taking on too much here and let's let's dial it back and do something that you can definitely achieve and then if you do it and you have time left then expand it but let's go for this instead of let's go for this instead of that <laughs> and that's that's usually um, that, that's usually the only feedback I give in, in terms of steering a student um, the you know sometimes someone's picked a tool that really doesn't make sense for the thing they're trying to do and so there's a bit of coaching in that sense but it's not I'm not going to reject proposals, but they are important to have so that you can get started on them. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up, and now that I have access to Canvas again, I will send an announcement with several of the details that I have um, put in, that I've mentioned uh, today on the stream in that uh, announcement, so you will have a, a written thing again. Oh yeah, the generator. Let me share the link. I didn't share the link. Let me share the link. Here's, here's the link. So yeah, check that out. Just hit the hit the button, and um, you'll see. By the way, like there's that's on a subdomain that I used to use for this class. So that's if you see if you look at applied.dgst101.net, that's that's what that is. Um, yeah, so much more to talk about with this big project, but we'll be 
picking that up again on Wednesday. Um, I don't know if I'll stream from the classroom or not. Uh, I may or may not. I haven't decided yet. So you might need to be ready for that if, if I do. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm going to wrap up the stream. If you have questions or issues, uh, you know how to get in touch. But the main thing, of course, like to read what I said originally, if you're still working on the, the HTML, CSS project, that's fine. Um, but I would say try to wrap it up quickly so you can move on to this one as well, right? Um, you don't want it to linger. Okay. See you later. Have a good afternoon.